Welcome to our show, The China Briefing. Today, we have some intriguing stories lined up for you. First off, Trip.com Group Limited has reported impressive earnings for the second quarter, raking in a staggering $527 million, translating to a profit of 77 cents per share. With adjusted earnings hitting $1 per share and revenues soaring to $1.76 billion, it seems the travel services giant is bouncing back strong. In a rather surprising turn of events, Australian airline Qantas has blamed a coding error for a jaw-dropping 85% discount on first-class flight. This mistake allowed around 300 lucky travellers to snag tickets that typically cost $15,000 Australian dollars for a mere fraction of the price. While Qantas is offering rebooking options and refunds to those affected, they're also gearing up to launch new first and business class suites in 2025. Quite the roller coaster. Lastly, Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers are shifting their focus to emerging markets like Brazil and Mexico due to stiff competition at home and rising trade barriers abroad. Despite strong sales in China, profitability remains a pressing concern, with only a couple of players currently in the black. It's a challenging landscape, but these companies are determined to diversify and enhance their profits. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. Trip.com, in an impressive display of financial resilience, Trip.com Group Limited reported a robust earnings snapshot for the second quarter, revealing a profit of $527 million. This translates to a per share profit of 77 cents, with adjusted earnings hitting $1 per share after accounting for stock option expenses and non-recurring costs. The Singapore-based travel services giant also recorded a substantial revenue of $1.76 billion during this period, showcasing its strong position in the travel industry as it continues to recover from the pandemic's impact. South China Morning Post In a surprising turn of events, Qantas Airways found itself at the center of a pricing debacle attributing an astonishing 85% discount on first-class flights to a coding error. This blunder allowed around 300 fortunate travellers to purchase tickets for flights between Australia and the US at a fraction of the normal price, which typically hovers around $15,000 Australian dollars, $10,000 US dollars. While the airline has opted to rebook these customers in business class as a goodwill gesture, it has also offered full refunds, highlighting the challenges and complexities of managing pricing in the competitive aviation market. As Qantas prepares to launch its new first and business class suites on long-haul flights in 2025, the airline continues to navigate the turbulent waters of customer service and operational integrity. South China Morning Post Chinese electric vehicle manufacturers are increasingly setting their sights on emerging markets such as Brazil and Mexico, driven by intense competition at home and rising trade barriers in developed nations, according to a Moody's report. The ratings agency notes that regions like Latin America, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia are becoming crucial for exports and production, as these markets exhibit growing demand for EVs alongside rising GDP per capita. Despite the booming sales of electric cars in China, fierce domestic competition has eroded profitability, with only a couple of local companies, BYD and Li Auto, managing to turn a profit. As Chinese EV makers grapple with the challenges of expanding internationally, they must also navigate potential risks, including regulatory hurdles and fluctuating demand, which could impact their long-term success in these new territories. South China Morning Post highlights the stark realities faced by individuals like Zheng Yojun, a PhD graduate from the University of Hong Kong, who grew up in a remote town in Gansu. Despite her academic achievements, Zheng struggled to fit in at Fudan University, where urban classmates often had advantages stemming from their backgrounds. Her experience reflects a broader issue of class divisions and the urban-rural divide in China, which poses a significant threat to sustainable growth. While the Communist Party acknowledges the need to address these disparities, particularly in education, Experts warn that the challenges are deeply rooted and complex. Research indicates that many rural children face cognitive delays, hindering their ability to compete in an increasingly skilled urban job market. As the population in rural areas remains substantial, the urgency to bridge this gap is evident, yet the path to reform appears fraught with difficulties. In another article, 
The South China Morning Post reports on the upcoming discussions between U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, which will cover critical issues such as Taiwan, the South China Sea, and artificial intelligence security. This meeting marks a significant diplomatic engagement, being the first visit by a U.S. National Security Advisor to Beijing since 2016. As tensions rise in the Indo-Pacific region, Sullivan aims to address concerns regarding China's assertive actions and its support for Russia. The Chinese government, in turn, is expected to reiterate its stance on the One China principle regarding Taiwan and assert its territorial claims in the South China Sea. This dialogue is crucial for maintaining communication between the two nations amid escalating geopolitical tensions, and observers will be keenly watching the outcomes of these discussions. Meanwhile, South Korea's President Yoon Suk-yeol has unveiled a bold plan for unification with North Korea, aiming to establish a unified, free, and democratic nation. However, this ambitious initiative faces significant hurdles both domestically and internationally. Domestically, the political landscape is divided, with a lack of bipartisan support and declining public interest in unification, particularly among younger generations. Internationally, North Korea's defiance and strengthened ties with Russia and China complicate the prospects for cooperation. Yoon's plan, which combines elements of coercion and reconciliation, risks being perceived as hostile by Pyongyang, further entrenching its resistance. The proposed establishment of an international Korean Peninsula Forum aims to foster dialogue, yet the underlying tensions and geopolitical dynamics suggest that achieving a unified Korea remains a distant dream, contingent upon overcoming substantial diplomatic challenges. Guardian, Coco Gaff has returned to the US Open with a renewed perspective on life and tennis, showcasing her resilience with a commanding first-round victory over Varvara Grasheva, winning 6-2, 6-0. This win comes after a challenging season where Gaff struggled with her performance, particularly at the Olympic Games and during recent tournaments. Despite facing breakpoints early in the match, she maintained her composure and dominated the second set, winning nine consecutive games. Gaff reflects on her journey, stating that she views this tournament as a celebration of her past achievements rather than a pressure-filled competition. As she prepares for her next match against Tatiana Maria, Gaff is determined to build on her success, drawing inspiration from her own words about the importance of self-belief and perseverance. Meanwhile, Zheng Qinwen, fresh off her Olympic triumph, also advanced after a hard-fought match, demonstrating the fierce competition present at the tournament. CBC Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's cabinet has expressed unwavering support for him, despite the Liberal Party's declining fortunes as they approach nearly a decade in power. Following a disappointing by-election loss, ministers affirmed their confidence in Trudeau during a cabinet retreat, with only one member publicly calling for his resignation. Polls indicate the Liberals are trailing significantly behind the Conservatives, with some suggesting a need for a change in leadership akin to the recent democratic resurgence in the US. However, Trudeau's ministers argue that Canada's political landscape is unique and that their focus should remain on addressing pressing issues such as affordability and social programs. Despite internal frustrations over the lack of substantive changes post by election, Trudeau plans to introduce new policy initiatives aimed at tackling these concerns, asserting that the government must respond to the issues that matter most to Canadians. As the political climate shifts, Trudeau's cabinet remains committed to supporting him as they prepare for the upcoming election, while critics claim that the government has failed to deliver meaningful solutions to the challenges facing Canadians. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com.
Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email. Ancient law, ancient belts, but pain and war. 